right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christina, aka The Writer, and today we are gathered here for yet another edition of SmackDown. This is the last episode of 2022. Good riddance, 2022. At least we're starting, at least we're closing the year off with a very strong show, from what I can tell. We're going to be getting John Cena and Kevin Owens versus Sammy and Roman. We're going to be getting Ronda versus Raquel, which on paper should be good. So, I mean, we're just going to have to see what happens, right? Right. So, as per usual, grab your snacks, grab your choice of beverage, get comfy and cozy, and let's get right to it, people. But before we dive into the reaction, just a heads up, there will be some light changes because we got a new light for the living room. I'm really excited about it. Uh, as you may have seen on Twitter already. Look, I got a new lamp, and it changes colors and stuff, and I have a remote control for it, so this 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 is totally going to be a great investment, I think. All right, guys, we got the Bray Wyatt Project kicking things off. You know what, Bray? You're not the only one with a bright blue light. Let me get this going. We got a new lamp in here, by the way. See? We're all spooky now, too. No matter what, like, Bray Wyatt's entrance is always just cool. I don't know. It's always cool. Even though what was not cool last week was this man attacking the freaking cameraman for no reason. Okay, internal demons, internal conflict. Look, I get it, but, like, you attack the cameraman. Why are we supposed to cheer for the dude that's attacking the backstage workers and the cameraman? Like, come on. I thought we had the intro a couple months ago almost. Now, we were on to this like whole situation a couple months ago. I feel like I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day with this feud. I, you should regret going after the cameraman. He was just literally standing there doing his job, but at least we're acknowledging this this week. Oh, thank God, we got LA Knight to just, you know, call him out on all this mess. I mean, he is finishing some sentences this time around, but it's just the problem is that we keep going back to this same, like, oh, well, you know, I'm very conflicted, I have these inner demons and that sort of thing, and I'm like, didn't we have this, and I have things I regret, we've been having this for, like, almost two, almost three months now, something like that. That's what I'm saying, he's still responsible for his own actions. I think we're getting a yowie wowie chant. Okay, we're, we're finally setting up a match or something, I think, right? His tone, his his voice changed. Oh, this man's gonna snap again. I love the SmackDown. Here comes the pain sign. We appreciate you, person out there in the crowd. Bray, you kind of showed us that last week with the cameraman, um, back in early November with the backstage worker. Where's Uncle Howdy at? Oh, asking you shall receive. But it looks like we're finally getting these two in a match at Royal Rumble in some shape or form. Embrace the dark. I mean, I kind of did just now. Wait, we're getting new music. What's happening? I didn't mean to summon you, Uncle Howdy. I didn't mean to. Wait, 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 wait. Does Uncle Howdy have his own entrance music? Uncle Howdy has his own entrance music. It almost sounds like something out of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh my god, he's walking down the ramp. If I'm in late night, I'm standing as close to the dang ropes as I, as I can be, just so that I can, like, run right out of there. Why does Uncle Howdy look so short? I love how LA Knight's just not having any of this right now. Oh, Uncle Howdy just took out Bray Wyatt. Yeah, you might get on out of there, LA Knight. Just run for your life. <laughs> run for it, LA Knight. Get out of here. Haven't, like, Uncle Howdy and Bray kind of been, like, on opposite sides, like, fighting amongst each other this entire time? This makes all the sense in the world. Am I the only one that's, like, seeing it through the weeds at this point? Because I feel like that's the case. So in a nutshell, Uncle Howdy snapped... This week, Bray Wyatt snapped last week, and kind of sort of this week. Uh, and I guess you could argue that maybe LA Knight kind of snapped and was starting to just like, you know, get a little heated and stuff like that about two weeks ago. So everybody's just starting to crack at this point. I want to see where things are going. These, This was quite the development, everybody. This was quite the development and one heck of a way to kick things off here. Alrighty, here we go. We got Solo Sokoa versus Sheamus as our first match of the evening. This should be quite good. I'm I'm stoked. This is uh, these two are going to beat the poop out of each other, and that's that's exactly what I'm here for. Oh, they acknowledged Don West. Oh, truly one of the pieces of my childhood. Oh, he just like smacked him just like that. I was like, am I going for slap or smack? I don't know. Oh, there goes Solo over the top rope. Okay, but this steel chair just sort of seems unprovoked. We're only a few, we're only a few minutes into this match. Sheamus has been crushing it the last couple of years or so. I think arguably since the Thunderdome era, right? That's in my opinion anyway. He was one of the highlights of it. 
But truly, Sheamus really had an incredible year, and the dude didn't even win a title. He just crushed it this year. Consistency is key sometimes, right? Right. Well, yeah, because sometimes you got to think about what you're doing next. I would assume so, anyway. And there goes Sheamus with the clothesline. You could also argue that Solo Sokoa had a really solid year, too. I mean, between his stuff going on with, like, NXT, but then, like, after he debuted on, like, the main roster and everything... That's when I really think he started to really just take off. And I mean, if this is only what he's been doing for like, what, like three or four months almost now? Like, imagine what he's going to be doing like six months from now. This could also be a thing that does not age well. Oh, he just kicked him. He stopped him. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. The knee. I love how Butch is like ready to just go right in the ring at any given time. <laughs> He really leans into the role, and we're here for it. Okay, um, grabbing a beard? That just sounds painful. <laughs> he called it the Texas clover leaf, and then just called it the clover leaf afterwards. <laughs> I don't understand what Seamus had to do with Texas, but okay. At least we got a at least we got that clarified. Seamus, what are we doing? Oh god. This dude just went flying. Oh! Oh my god. Solo was right there with the arm and he just dragged him right into the post and then hit a backbreaker onto the apron. Oh boy. I like that he's using the spike that Umaga used to use. I think that's great. Okay, uh, the, the screens along the barricade are all glitching out. Oh, okay, Drew. Okay, okay, that makes sense. We, we missed you, Drew. All right, Drew's about to come in and clear house. Love that for him. Alrighty, so overall, I kind of wish that this whole feud would kind of like end at this point. But it's nice to see Drew back. I think Sheamus and Solo had a good match. So, I mean, you know, lots of positives. But again, I wish we would just wrap this thing up very soon. For all of our sakes, that'd be pleasant. But at least we got Drew back. So that's lovely. I love Raquel's gear this week. It looks really nice. Yay! Ronda Rousey defends her title. We all know how the last defense turned out. I will say this, I like Raquel, like, as a good guy more so here on SmackDown than I liked her as a good guy over on NXT. I think it's because she's really, like, you know, finding her footing as, you know, more of a good guy and whatnot. Well, yeah, I mean, Raquel stands out from the rest of the locker room, and if she gave you a run for your money the first time around, I'd be concerned too about my title. Rhonda, what were you just trying to do there? You weren't, like, standing on her or anything. You were just yelling. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? If you're gonna talk some trash, talk some trash, but at least make it a little convincing. Okay, that was kind of cool for Mikhail right there. All right. So wait, Ronda Rousey gets slammed once and she runs outside the ring. Okay, um, we got back from the break and all we saw was Ronda just like dragging Raquel's arm against the rope and it was very close up. So, there's that. Did you just say this never works? Well, then why are you using it on her, Rhonda? I'm, I'm trying to follow along here, okay? I really am. But I like how fiery Raquel has been in this match. We appreciate that. See, that would have made a little bit more sense for the pinfall right there if she kind of, like, wrapped her arm, like, behind her a little bit. I don't know. Because, I mean, as long as the two shoulders are pinned, it's considered a pinfall, right? But again, like last week, it's like Raquel all of a sudden, like, she'll remember the arm, like, in certain situations. But then, like, moves like that, it's like I get adrenaline can kick in and that sort of thing. Like, there's been multiple moves where it's like, she forgets the arm is injured. And it, it takes me out of it, I think. I said it last week and I'll say it again this week. Okay, so the screen by the commentary table is still not fixed. Like, right behind them, anyway. Oh my god, the screens are, like, acting all weird and stuff like that. And it's also taking me out of it now. And I'm like, alright, Bray, what'd you do this time? No, I'm kidding. Okay, that was a good one-arm move right there. See, that makes sense to me. What is she trying to do here? I'm so confused. Okay, well, I guess she's over the top rope. How does she have a chance if they're both outside the ring? Like, you have to win by pinfall or submission. Did I miss the rule change somewhere? <laughs> Alright, we're back from the break. Raquel, okay, went for the cover. Ronda got to the rope. Minus some of the illogicalness that I've seen so far. This hasn't been too bad of a match. It's been fairly serviceable. Definitely been the best Ronda match that we've seen so far in these reactions. Although, I mean, look at what we've had to work with in the first few months of doing these SmackDown reactions anyway, right? Right. And I like how they're giving them plenty of time, too, for the title match and, you know, making it feel like a big deal. I mean, we're already at the top of the hour, so that makes sense to me. Oh, well, that was certainly a unique way to get Ronda off her back. Okay. Oh, but her arm is, like, right by the freaking ropes and Shayna's right there. There it is. Oh, but the ref caught Shayna. Okay, so we're at the top rope right here. Ronda's got 
the arm bar locked in on the top rope. This is certainly interesting. Oh my god, okay. Oh, yep, that that's it. Definitely a very unique ending. And I gotta say, this match wasn't bad. It was pretty serviceable. And, you know, the crowd was really into it. So, I mean, I'll take that as a win, definitely. I think Ronda, honestly, this was probably, like, up there for, like, best matches of her second run so far. Uh, the other one that I can think of that's been her best one so far was the I Quit match with Charlotte. And speaking of Charlotte, I, I hope she comes back soon, because I low-key miss her. But, I mean, this was a good match. I enjoyed it. Asking you shall receive, apparently. Yes! Oh, thank goodness we got Charlotte Flair back. She's looking fantastic, too. Wait, Charlotte's got new music, too! Oh, shoot! Charlotte's challenging Ronda tonight? Oh, boy. Well, that explains why she's in her gear. I love how Shayna's trying to talk some sense into Ronda now. Wait, are we actually having a title match? Who's making these matches? Oh boy, Ronda and Shayna are arguing. Wait, we're having another title match. Oh boy. Okay, I guess we're getting Charlotte versus Ronda now for the SmackDown title. Oh, there goes Ronda. Oh boy. Oh, there goes Charlotte. The roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up. Oh, thank God. Okay, but they kind of just... This is the second title reign in a row that Ronda lost to a roll up. But I think this could be setting up Ronda versus Shayna at some point, too. Potentially, right? I would think so, anyway. You know what You know what would actually be a good match? I'd like to see this happen. I don't know how it would happen, but I'd like to see it happen. Can we get Bianca versus Charlotte? Maybe, like, you know, unify the titles or something? But I really think they're going to try to do something slowly but surely with Ronda versus Shayna. I don't know how exactly we're going to get to it, but I think we're going to get to it. But boy, oh boy, well, we had a title change tonight, and it wasn't Raquel Rodriguez. It was Charlotte Flair instead. All right, it looks like we're getting an Imperium segment. I have no idea what to expect, but we just saw the digital exclusive with Dominic and Ray at Christmas time. And then we just had a backstage segment with, like, the tag teams and Ricochet and Madcap Moss. And, and they're turning the top dollar flop into a top dollar storyline, apparently. Look, y'all, I, I really tried. Okay, so we're getting a cool video package of Gunther and his title reign thus far. God, just keep that title on him for as long as possible at this point. <laughs> I'm curious, like, I'm, I'm guessing that they're going to give us this match at Royal Rumble, too, because I'm like, okay, they're starting to give us matches for Royal Rumble because we just got LA Knight versus Bray Wyatt in the pitch black match announced. Wait, what? Well, yeah, uh, Braun, there's a lot of people that weren't in that video. Did you just call him boy? You just called Gunther boy. Oh, there goes Braun running around the ring again. See, at least Gunther had the right idea. Just duck right out of the way and let him crash into things. <laughs> Honest to God, I've been waiting for that to happen for a little bit, okay? Oh my God, Ricochet. Ricochet's just like jumping over people and like going wild with the chair and we're here for it. At least he's doing okay though, because he had a nasty hit from that chair last episode. I know that one was taped and all that, but at least he's doing okay. All right, here we go. We got Kevin Owens, John Cena, making his triumphant return here for a matchup in 2022. We got Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn representing the bloodline. I'm excited. This is going to be great. Plus, I mean, it's John Cena, and it's Roman Reigns, and it's Sami Zayn, and it's Kevin Owens. Look, all I'm saying is that just from the names alone in this match, I'm automatically excited. I, I want to see if I can match John Cena's... Trons. Wait, he's using all the different colors, y'all. John Cena and I were matching. I, it's it's matching my excitement for, for John Cena. What can I say? <laughs> we appreciate you, John Cena. We appreciate you, too. John Cena's entrance theme will never not be iconic. It'd actually be really fitting if John Cena was at WrestleMania this year because it's got, like, the Hollywood theme and it's in California. And that was, like, you know, where he won his first world title and stuff like that at, was at WrestleMania 21. So I think it'd make for a nice, like, full circle kind of moment. Oh my god. Never change, Sammy. Never change. He's <laughs> just, like, jamming out to the music and everyone's acting all serious in the background. <laughs> Be like Sammy Zayn. Bring in that energy. Okay, Sammy's back to dancing again. That's a good point, Michael Cole. We haven't had the honorary part actually dropped yet. What an incredible streak that is for Cena. Jeez, oh man. Imagine having a match every single year for 20 years. You, you can't go wrong with Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens in any capacity. You just can't. So it's great that we're getting them, you know, right off the bat. You're embarrassing yourself in front of the tribal chief. Oh boy. Sammy tagged in Roman. Oh boy. Now the crowd wants Cena in. That makes sense to me. Well, that's definitely a way to go to commercial. 
we really went to a commercial break now, and we only have, like, maybe ten minutes left of the show at most. Okay, I don't know how we got to this point in the match. Alright, so we have Sammy and Kevin back in the match, and Sammy just luva kicked John Cena outside the ring. Oh, ouch. Beautiful kick right there from Kevin. Wait, I thought Sammy was the legal person. Oh, a beautiful splash right there from KO. Heck of a counter right there for Roman. Oh, ow. Like, just imagining running, like, full speed like that right into the steel post with, like, the LED lights and stuff. That's gotta hurt, y'all. That's really gotta hurt. Listen to the crowd. They really want Cena in this thing, and we're here for it. Oh, boy, here we go. We got Sammy versus Cena. This should be good. Sammy and Cena. See, that actually sounds like a good little team name. Oh, boy. Cena's cleaning house. He just did the you can't see me to Roman. Oh, my God, no. <gasps> Oh my god. They're doing a double five-knuckle shuffle. Oh, that's great. Well, I mean, in Kevin's defense, he didn't really have much room to, you know, run over with. Oh, there goes Sammy. Roman's outside the ring. Beautiful. Cena and Kevin won the match. A nice little feel-good moment for everybody. I do wonder what's going to be next for Sammy, because he ate the fall and caused him and Roman to lose the match. So I got to see what happens. We, we, we need we need the story. But this was a nice little way to like close up the show. Everybody was super into it. And I mean, look, I can't complain one bit about it. It served its purpose. It was a feel-good moment. And look, I'm not going to complain about seeing John Cena on my screen. I'm not. <laughs> Definitely a good way to close up the show and enter in 2023. All right, so here we go. Final thoughts for this week's episode of SmackDown. It was the final episode of SmackDown for 2022. And... Thank goodness, and definitely a heck of a way to close out the year. I like how we end on a strong note going into 2023, and as we really start the road to Royal Rumble, it feels like. It feels like, to me, we're sort of at like that mid-season finale, almost mid-season premiere type of phase, right? Where it's like, we got a lot of developments, we got some fresh things starting. It's a mixture of things, right? Like, you're starting to wrap some stuff up, but then you're also starting some new stuff. So it's kind of in that weird transition, but it's starting to, you know, build towards that finale, and that finale being Royal Rumble. Uh, so far for Royal Rumble, we have the two Rumble matches and the Pitch Black match. So I'm wondering what the other matches are going to look like for Royal Rumble. I don't think there's going to be that many more matches because the Royal Rumble matches take like forever, right? So I'm wondering how that's going to look like. Uh, we got a few new matches announced. Uh, we got the LA Knight and Bray Wyatt pitch black match coming up at Royal Rumble. I want to know what y'all are thinking about like what this match is going to look like. I have no idea, but I'm excited to see what's going to happen because I'm like, if there's two people that are probably going to make product placement in the sponsored match, you know... And they're going to make it work. It's these two, right? Like, I, given what we've been seeing the last few weeks and how the storyline's really been, you know, moving along the past few weeks or so, I think they're going to knock it out of the park. That's just my prediction. But I overall really enjoyed this week's episode. I mean, Charlotte came back. I'd like to see Charlotte versus Raquel. I think that would be a really good match. They both have, they're both very athletic, and I think it would work really well. And I was really impressed with that match of two with Ronda and Raquel. I think they did a good job overall. There were a couple of spots where I was like, oh, I don't know. But I thought that one was a really good match, too. I think the, the entire show was really good, in my opinion. So... Um, definitely a great way, again, ending the year out strong. Let's keep this moving into next week. And speaking of matches coming up for next week, we've got the tag titles on the line between Drew and Sheamus versus the Usos. And then we've also got Ricochet versus Top Dalla for the Royal Rumble qualifying match. Because now we're turning that botch into... We're, we're taking Top Dalla's slip up into a storyline. So, I mean, hey, you know, you gotta take one of those crappy moments and turn it into something good, you know? The, uh, that's sort of how I see it anyway, right? But anyway around, let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode of SmackDown down in the comments down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button so you get notifications around here and that sort of thing. So on that note, thank y'all so much for tuning in and I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.